Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and in this video I hope to share with you some things that you may not have known or have forgotten about SwiftUI previews and what changed in Xcode 14 so that you can get the most out of creating and viewing your SwiftUI views while designing and coding them. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. I prepared a starter project for this video and I encourage you to download it from the link in the description and work along with me. That way when completed, you'll have a working example with code that you may be able to reuse in the future in your own projects. This is a pretty basic starter project that contains three views. The first view is content view and it has a counter button on the main screen that simply displays the current counter that is incremented by going to the second view, and this is managed by pushing the view onto a navigation stack, passing the counter in as a binding. That second view contains a large circle with a large integer text view overlaid on it, and the circle has a tap gesture associated with it, so that when tapped, it increments the count and displays it. There's a third view called Stuart Lynch view that is embedded within this view. Tapping on the back button returns you to the first view, and you see that the counter has been updated on the main view as well. Now this is not a very practical or useful example, but it does allow me to show you some things about SwiftUI previews and the canvas. First of all, let's look at that canvas. Along the bottom you now see five buttons along the left. In Xcode 14, by default, previews are live. This means that controls are active, and by tapping on them you trigger any associated actions, as you've seen. The second button turns off live mode and makes the controls selectable. Now the problem I have with this content view is that it's embedded in a navigation stack, so tapping on the campus preview selects the entire navigation stack, and it doesn't appear that you can get below that to tap on individual views like this navigation link. Now let me come back to this in a minute because I do have a bit of a workaround, but first let's take a look at the Stuart Lynch view. I can zoom in and out of the canvas using these zoom buttons on the right. Again, by default, it's in preview mode, but by clicking on the selectable button, it'll allow us to get to the views that are within that. And here we can tap directly on a text view, or on the image, and a border gets placed directly around it, and the view in the editor is selected as well. Conversely, you can start from the editor and tap on a view or a container, like a V stack, or an H stack, and see the border placed around it in the canvas. Back in Content View, a workaround is to temporarily comment out the navigation stack, and that'll give you access to the views beneath using that selectable option. This appears to me to be a bug in Xcode, so if anyone knows how to get below a navigation stack to select views, please leave a comment in the description. Now there's one more feature of the selectable button that we'll discover a little later. The next button is the Variance button. This allows me to view directly, all in one location, different variants for color scheme, orientation, and dynamic type. So let's return to the Stuart Lynch view and take a look at this. If we select color variants, you get to see what your view looks like in both light and dark mode in the selected simulator. In my case, it's the iPhone 14 Pro. If we select orientation variants, it displays the different orientations available for that device. And on the iPhone 14 Pro, that is the portrait and the two landscape variants. This is perfect to see if your views lay out properly at a glance. The dynamic types variants is a real eye opener. And if you're using dynamic type and you're not paying attention to accessibility needs, you could find yourself in trouble. If you use dynamic fonts like this one, that defaults to the body font, the size will increase as users set different dynamic size defaults on their phones. 
if you make any changes while you're in a dynamic type variant in the editor, those changes will be viewed in all of those different dynamic type sizes. With any of those variants displayed, you can also change device settings. Which ones that are available will depend on the variant selected. If you have dynamic type selected, you can choose to set the color scheme and or the orientation so that you can see them all with dynamic type. If you have orientation selected, you can then alter the color scheme and the dynamic type. And if you have color scheme variants selected, you can specify on orientation and dynamic type. Let's view our standard canvas in the default portrait light mode right now. If you have a device connected, like I do, I'll connect my iPhone 13 Pro here, and I can tap on the preview on device button, and the preview gets displayed right on your device, just as it would in the canvas. Let's move on now to see how we can apply more control to our previews beyond our first view. If you go to the second view, you'll notice that there is no preview displayed. And this is a SwiftUI view, but it's lacking a preview provider. Well, we can fix this by creating one manually, or we can choose from the editor menu, create preview. Well, this creates a boilerplate preview provider for you but it's not displaying our view, it's rather displaying a simple text view. So we can fix that by changing the view that's to be previewed from the text view to our second view. But our second view requires a binding to some integer value. You'll typically see developers using a constant here to represent a binding. So for example, we can suggest constant providing the value of one. Now, this is not really a true representation of what we'll see in our app because this view is being pushed onto a navigation stack, and I see that it actually has a navigation title applied to it, but it's not visible. Views that are pushed onto the navigation stack inherit the navigation stack, so we don't need to create it in the view, but we lose the preview display because the preview is simply presenting the view as it sees it here in this code, and it has no idea that it had been pushed onto a navigation stack. So we can fix that in the preview provider by simply embedding it within a navigation stack. You can create additional preview tabs now by grouping and duplicating your preview content. Previously, this would have just added a new preview onto the same view. Now in Xcode 14, it creates tabs. So this means if your preview is enclosed in a navigation stack like mine is, we'll need to duplicate the entire content like this, and we'll see three tabs. And we can move from one tab to the other. Now there are some preview provider modifiers that you can apply to each of the individual tabs differently. For example, in the second one, we can apply a preview interface orientation modifier and choose one of the cases that are provided for you if you start just by entering a period. So let's choose Landscape Right. Well, now that we've changed the orientation, let's apply a name to this so that I can see that in my tab. So we'll need to create a preview display name modifier, and we can provide it with the string Landscape. So let's also return to the first preview and provide it with a preview display name using the string portrait. Now the device that is used for the preview canvas is the one that is selected. And as you change the device, you get to see what it'll look like 
on a different device. Well, the problem is that it changes it for all of the tabs that are being displayed. And the one that I'm usually concerned about is the iPhone SE, as it's the smallest device. And I just want to have it as a tab so that I can always double check to see that my view will be visible no matter what the size. So I want to apply a preview device modifier and specify that specific preview device name. Well, that name that we specify is exactly the one that you see when you select from the simulator chooser. And the one I want is this iPhone SE, and then within parentheses, third generation. Well, when we request an argument for the preview device, we must enter a preview device object. And this has a raw value that you can provide. And it's that string that is the name that is exactly what we want. So we'll enter that here. And we might as well add a preview display name for this one too. I'll just call it the iPhone SE. We can even apply variants just to this particular device as well, and it applies only to this device tab. Let's switch to the Stuart Lynch view now, and I see that it's showing me the view entirely within a device. Well, this really isn't what I will ever see. It's never going to be displayed on its own. It's always going to be a sub view of an existing view. So all of these device bezels and white space here don't make any sense. So there's another modifier that we can apply, and that is a preview layout. And when you apply this, you have two options, fixed and size that fits. If you choose fixed, you'll need to specify a particular width and height, like 300 by 100. Nothing changes on the canvas, however, until you make it selectable. And then you see, I've made that view too narrow. It will need to be wider. However, I'm going to choose the other option, and that is to use a preview layout using the case of size that fits. And now it displays the content within a frame that fits, so making modifications or changing variants will display the content only within the space you need. If you choose now to pin this view, by tapping on that pin button on the top left, it appears as though nothing has changed. However, if I return now to the second view, you'll see that pin view is there now too. So you can quickly view all related views and orientations at the same time. Well, there's one more thing. And this is something that had bothered me for a long time. If I return now to the portrait view for our second view, I'll see that tapping on the circle does absolutely nothing. That number doesn't increment. And that's because our preview in each case is using a constant value, not a binding to a particular value that's going to change. Well, we can fix this by creating a second view within the preview. And I'm going to call it preview view, and it'll be of type view. And this will require a body variable, which is some view. Well, in here, we can create a new state property for our counter, not a binding, a state property, and assign it an initial value like we do in content view. So I'll assign it the value of one. And then in the body, we can create a second view binding our counter to this state counter. And then for all of the preview tabs that you want to become interactive, we can choose to display the preview view instead. So I'll do that for this portrait tab. And there you have it. I hope you've learned something from this video and can use what you've learned when developing your own projects. I know I did while researching and creating this video. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. If you like my channel, please subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of new videos as they come out. Thanks for watching.